I want to say before I start that um, the challenge when you speak to a group in this format is that for it to feel intimate, you can't come up with notes. And I have a terrible memory, so I hope it's okay with you that I've embedded my notes right in my slides. <laughs> let, me <tell> you, <laughs> let me tell you about Salt Lake City. <laughs> Earlier this year, our foundation sponsored a trip for 24 local leaders to visit Salt Lake City to learn about their approach to economic development and transit and transportation. And we did this because at the Peter Hewitt Foundation, one of our primary areas of, 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 of impact is economic growth and opportunity. And we do that because of the values of our founder. Peter Kewitt cared deeply about the growth and development and building out of, of Omaha and our metro region. He also cared deeply about the importance of a good job and of people having economic opportunity. So we found ourselves, 24 of us, in Salt Lake City to hear about their story. That's me. <laughs> now, some of you, you may recognize me in the back of the picture. But I don't know if you recognize the other big guys in the back of this picture. They're called mountains. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than that. Let's go, let's hear it. It's not easy to be up here. I promise it's my only cheesy joke I will say, which is hard for me. Um, anyway, what we learned is that Salt Lake City is actually a lot like Omaha. So in their metro region, they have about 1.1 million people. We have nearly a million people in our metro. They are very fiscally conservative. They hate taxes. We are very fiscally conservative. We hate taxes. They're growth constrained because they're geographically locked between mountains and a lake. And we are actually growth constrained um, between a river and a state line. They were facing significant brain drain, as are we. And they've invested billions in education, transit, roads, and entrepreneurship. And we, <laughs> not so much. Hold that thought. Um, and the results were really evident to our group. So as we traveled around Salt Lake City, we went on their bus rapid transit. We took their light rail. We took their commuter rail. And along every economic corridor that we traveled on, commercial and residential developments were just bursting out of the ground. And as a result of this, in 2016, their economy grew 7%. They were the fifth fastest growing city in the United States. They reversed their brain drain um, and uh, they became the number three tech talent market for job growth in the country. Almost a billion in VC funding, and Utah last year was named as the top state for business in the US by Forbes magazine. Not too shabby. So we came back, this is the part I always forget. We came back with a lot of really important lessons, and they're all leadership lessons, all of them. And I wanna share those with you quickly. Uh, the first, don't waste a crisis. So for them back in 2005, they were shedding jobs, they were losing businesses, and their economy was just stagnating. But the part of their crisis that just really killed them was the brain drain. Because people there realized that the number one export for their region had become their own children. And they felt that. Uh, just really quickly, raise your hand if you have grown children. Keep your hands up if you have grown children who have left Nebraska or who are not here. A fair number. I want to share with you our brain drain data. So this is, what this chart says is that from 2000 to 2010, we had a net export of 3,700 bachelor's degree holders. We had a net export of nearly 1,000 associate's degree holders. And we even had a net export of, of over 150 high school students. During that same time period, we gained about 1,300 folks who were high school dropouts, and we gained about 750 some college, college non-completers. So what that means is that if you had a degree of any kind at any level, you were more likely to leave Nebraska than you were to come here. At the same time, if you had dropped out, come on in, we got the job for you. Not a good recipe for economic success. Second, you can't cut your way to greatness. You have to invest your way to greatness. So being fiscally conservative, the leaders in, in, in Salt Lake City absolutely trimmed the budgets. They absolutely looked at how they can cut their costs, but they spent a lot more of their leadership focus on looking at how they invest in transit, in entrepreneurship, and in education. They had a growth mentality, even in a time of crisis. You have to set bold goals. The biggest goal that the leaders in Salt Lake City set was to create a unified regional system of transit and transportation. 
and they've already seen nearly $7 billion in economic development since they put that in place from the private sector. You need strong public-private leadership. Their philanthropic business um, and, and elected officials came together and partnered incredibly effectively and were champions for the effort. And lastly, the public needs to get it. And in fact, the public in Salt Lake City got it so much that they voted 70-30, even in a fiscally conservative place, to increase their sales tax to make this investment. That's right. Just, <laughs> I know, I had to go quickly now. 70% uh, of the vote. And they actually passed the second sales tax increase because they wanted to speed up the pace of development and get there quicker. Um, so now I'm, really, I'm running out of time, so I want to switch to Omaha, because it's really important we talk about what's going on right now in our region, because this is an incredibly important time. And we have come a long way in the past 50 years. And we're at it again. Like right now, when you look across our region, we are booming with projects, right? Boys Town, 75 North, Lot B, Capital District, Bus Rapid Transit, the Downtown Corridor in, in, in Council Bluffs, and the list goes on. And we have got to make the most of this opportunity because we do not want to look back 30 years from now and realize that we'd squandered this time. Because the decisions that we're making right now and in the next few years are going to impact what our region looks like for decades to come. So to me, when I look at that, and when I look at for our foundation where we want to spend our time and where I look at our community and where I want to see our leadership and our community get galvanized is really around five big goals. The first, we need a compelling and ambitious vision for our region's future. One that excites professionals to stay here, to launch businesses here, to move here. Number two, we have got to connect the dots between all these incredible projects. Otherwise, we run the risk of becoming a city of island states, disconnected island states. Number three, there's no version of the Omaha of the future that does not involve world-class transit and transportation. And I'm not talking about one project at a time. I'm talking about a system. Number four, we need to activate and develop our riverfront into a premier destination enjoyed by all that connects us as a region. And number five, it's incredible that we have the kinds of businesses like Todd's, 100-year-old family businesses, 150-year businesses. We also need to unleash the next wave of great Omaha born and based businesses to fuel growth and to create great jobs for, for people. So I want to give you one call to action. I want to ask you to do one thing from a, from, a, from a perspective. And it really comes down to making sure your voice is heard. So I'm going to come back and leave this up here. But up here, you see two email addresses. You see the mayor's hotline, and you see the city council chief of staff. What I want you to do at some point today, take out your cell phone, type in one of these addresses, and send them a note about Omaha and about what you think is needed to make sure that we boom. So let me close with an inspiring quote, <laughs> and one that to me reflects why voice matters so much when you look at economic development for a city. So Jane Jacobs said, cities have the capability of providing something for everybody, only because and only when they are created by everybody. So thank you.